Lord Shalom. I like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakadash. I like to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Nosa. These rich cocksuckers who don't give a fuck about them. It's called the American Dream. Jesus word. Necessary and truth. And again, I'm, I'm the brother of the war. Uh, back at you again with another lesson. Uh, this one too, like yesterday. It's gonna be more of an open form. We don't really have any lessons. Uh, didn't have a deep meditation on the scripture. So I hope, you know, Yahweh Bashim Shai, you know, pour his spirit on me uh, to edify and to, uh, you know, prophesize, man, to speak, you know, to speak his word. And um, as you know, this is 2019. You know, this year alone, you know, was one hell of a year already. Um, we haven't even reached the summertime yet. Remember, at the beginning of this year, there was the government shutdown. You know, that was scaring a lot of folks. It was like a, 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 a prelude, you know. We had all these black women. You know, they was crying, you know, they were selling, threatening you, they're going to take off your uh, food stamps in Section 8, you know, and uh, these things are still going to happen, man. See, the reason why these things and like the government had to go shut down is because the government had to shut down because funds are not being met, Just all right? We, we're dandy. basically in a crisis, so when at any given time, that could be an economic uh, collapse, man. Okay? Because America owes billions and trillions of dollars, man. All right? And, um, you know, Trump, when they do cut, they tax cut, you know, the poor, you know? And, and they let the rich, you know, live, all right? Continue to live, you know? This thing is about rich and poor. There's really no middle class, man. It's about rich and poor, good and evil, all right? And the good, all right, even though it's hard to see, but you can say through the elect, the good is the Israelites, man. The poor is the Israelites, all right? And the evil is the rich, and the evil is these Edomites, all right? Now, now I might have said, well, let me say this, and I'm gonna say this, man, because even when you're rich, you know, you forsake the most high. All right? You know, look at these rappers. Look at these movie actors. These uh, jigs. All right? Particular jig, right? The Israelites. Well, do they worship and serve the most high, the creator? No. Do they believe in Yahweh Shai? No. A lot of them believe in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is a, a man made uh, figure, man. All right? Really, that's the rapper's Christmas. You know? Or well, later on down the line, you had. Uh, uh, Cesare Borgia, you know, and now Esau, he got the whole world calling on the name Jesus Christ, man, uh, in this Christianity, you know, Christianity, slavery doctrine was meant, was, was made for Israelites, all right, it was made for us so that we could not come back unto our power, we not know our inheritance, man, you know, Esau's a thief, you know, let me see something, uh, bear with me. Let me uh, get a quick scripture. Uh, what's that? Uh, what's that? Uh, St. John chapter 10. Yeah, let me get that. Uh, St. John chapter 10 and 10. It says, it says, um, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have abundance, fuck you, that they might have life and that they may they might have it more abundantly, all right? So, Just the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Who is Yahweh Shai talking about? Because when you read St. John 10 and 10, all right, that's talking, that's Yahweh Shai speaking, that's written in red. So, so, so for you Christians out there, for you vocab, Malone, who is the Lord talking about? I mean, even our Lord, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, he understood that his people had enemies, all right? 
He understood that. And he was warning his people. He was warning them from the enemy. Okay? It says, uh, St. John 10 and 10, I'm going to read again. It says, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. It says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So that just proves that we don't have life right now, man. We don't have it. All right? You know what I mean? We alive, but we're not truly living life in the way the Most High made us into existence to live, man. We're being slaved. We're being subjected. All right? And, and, and uh, taken away from resources, you know, so that the rich can stay rich, you know, and that the poor can stay poor. But this is why we we uh we look for our Lord, man. This is why we look for our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right, because Yahweh Shai, he said here, he said, "I am come that they might have life, so we can actually truly live life. Meaning, we can live a full age. We can live without sinning. We can be with the Lord. We can be uh you know the Most High will be pleased with us, right? It says, "I am come that they might have life." And that they might have it more abundantly. More abundantly, man. You know, we want to be subject. You know, a man don't have to be subject to one woman. You know, that's the way Esau stripped us from being, you know, because he don't want us to populate. See, the bigger issue is, see, women, they be in their feelings about a man having another woman. But it's bigger than them. Esau don't want us to have multiple wives because he don't want us to repropriate, man. He don't want us to outnumber him. And even though we is, we always still outnumber him. But he don't want to see us grow, outgrow him. You know? And this is why you got a, a couple of uh, you got a couple of Edomites that have come across YouTube from time to time. And they have complained about, you know, Just our people are dying. Me. You know, we need to come together. We're losing our country and this and that. You know, we patriots, and, you know, the government is against us. We got to be for ourselves. You know, they're outnumbering us. We about to, you know, they believe they're going to turn into the minority. You already is the minority. We're the majority, man. Israel is scattered, okay? It's just the fact that it's, it's the ones who now awoke, who's the Lord dealing with, right? But it says, um, I am come to, I am come that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly, man. And that's something I can't wait for, man. You know, I can't wait, but it's just a figure of speech. Meaning, meaning, I, meaning I, uh, I haste for it, man. Okay? In a day. You know, you don't take these days uh, for granted, man. You live day by day. You know, all that longevity planning and things like that. Or what I'm going to do next year. What status I'm going to be at next year. Man, you crazy, man. Because... A man of wisdom of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh he understands that at any given time. All right, remember, what's that? Second Nature's 9 and 1. He said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest parts of the signs past, then thou shalt uh, uh, know that the Most High uh, 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 is visiting the earth in which he made. So that lets you know that, you know, you're supposed to see the seeds, you're supposed to see the prophecies. You know, now we don't know the day and the time and the set hour. And that the Lord is going to come. But the Lord did tell us what the prophecies look like and to expect him and expect his return. So that means that why would I be planning uh, for next year or two years from now? You know, why I'll be setting up these trust funds in the bank and, you know, and for my children, I'm going to, when he turned 21. I mean, fuck all that shit, man. You know, now, now is that to be a fool, not to use wisdom? No, it's not saying that, man. You know, but my mind is not going to be, you know, for the long term for this society, all right? It's going to be for me to get by, you know? That's why it's like, it's look, we tell young dudes, man, don't go to college, man. Go get a trade, you know? Why are you going to college for four years? It might not be four years for this place. Go get a trade. Go, 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 tra go get a trade, something for six months. In the meantime, continue to keep serving the Lord and then get, and get your money that way, man. You know, to where boom, you good, man. You know, if you if you would do that, man. You know, but hey, who am I? You know, a man of the Lord. 
you know, he'll, he'll sacrifice everything and he'll let the Lord plan his steps. So, so, hey, oh, see, you know, who am I? You know, a man, a real man of the Lord, he'll sacrifice, man. He'll let the Lord plan his way. All right. You know, so, hey, man, uh, let me read 11. It says, I am come, no, Slaki, it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So our Lord Yahweh Shai gave his life for us, man. And we're the sheep. We don't care about what Vocab Malone is talking about. We don't care about this guy Eric or uh, James White, the, the Edomite, you know, whatever these characters on YouTube looking for a name, looking for attention, looking to get rich. You know, they wish they they hating on Nate, you know, Nate, Nate, Nate from IUIC, you know, he be he got rich off of being an Israelite. You know, and they and, and they can't see why. You know, so they want a piece of the pie, man. They 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 they, they think that if they go against us, they could continue have they can always have attention on them. You know, then they can monetize their videos, they could they could sell stuff at the end of their products. I mean, excuse me, at the end of their shows and try to get you to go and buy this and buy that. It's all a money marketing scheme, man. It's all to put it's all to put money in their pocket. But us brothers here at Great Millstone, you know, we gotta eat too. But guess what? We don't use the Lord to eat. We eat the word of the Lord, man. And we give it out freely. Okay? We don't eat off the Lord's plate, man. All right? Whatever the Lord give us, that's what we eat. And he said to give it give it back freely, man. So we're not going to use the Lord for a money marketing scheme, man. Unlike you, you, you uh, these churches out here, man. Unlike these churches, man. You know? We're not going to sell out the Lord, man. You know, there was a scripture uh, where the Lord overthrew the, the chambers, man. He overthrew the uh, chambers, man. And um, let me see something real quick. I don't have my uh, my iPad with me. I got uh, this other device, which I don't know how to work it. Work it, work it, work it. Excuse me, I don't know how to work it that well. Uh, let me see here. Bear with me, man. Uh, how do I get to the internet? Um, uh, Just fucking dandy. But anyway, man, the Lord, he overthrew tables, man, because he went into the, uh, he went inside uh, one of the, one of the places and he saw that they were selling out the most high, man, you know, so you got these guys that are clever and they think that, you know, if they could do something around the Bible, they can have something longevity, you know, you think of these uh, money marketing schemes, man, they sit down with their little friends and their people that have helped them. Uh, you know, moderate their, their live streams and things like that. They get a team together, man. Yeah. It's all Satan, man. You know, so, um, you know, like anyway, man. Uh, let, let me get back to where I was at. I'm about to find myself back to where I was at. Continue to elect these rich cocksuckers who don't give a fuck about them. It's called the American dream. Because you have to be asleep. Um, St. John chapter 10 and um, 
11 it says I am the good shepherd I am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep and that's our Lord Yahweh Shai man who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ he gave his life for the sheep you know you know what man on earth is willing to do that nobody man except for the men of the Lord you know and even that that's a hard task man that's why we we, we uh, worship and we glorify and we praise our Lord, man. Because what he done is that he stopped you Edomites from, from stealing Just our blessing, man. Dandy. Straight up. Yahweh Shai stopped these Edomites from stealing our inheritance, man. You know? Because he done that, there was promises and covenants made, man. Matter of fact, before he did it, there was a covenant made. And there was promises. But when he did that, he sealed the deal, man. You think the Lord Yahweh Shai died for nothing? You think he died for nothing? You know, you think he died and, and his people are not going to be redeemed by the Most High? The Heavenly Father is a, is a man of his word, man. Scriptures say he's not a man that lied, man. Okay? And because Yahweh Shai did that, the Most High, you know, is going to deliver his elect. He's going to recover his remnant. He's going to bring back his Israelites, man. All right? It says, um, but he that is in hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, see if the wolf cometh, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catches them, and scatters the sheep. And that's what a lot of these guys, you know, even paid, paid Israelites in certain groups, man. You know, they sold out. You got this guy Vocat, he wants to be a, um, he wants to be a wolf. But, you know, hey, man, you done been figured out by all the camps, man. You know, you're not a wolf. You know, we can see you. You're not, you're not even a sheep. It says, but he that is in hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not see if the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep the hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep so you got men all right that want the glory you know for being in his truth before others you know the elderly you know they want to be called the elders they want to be called apostles. And you had these men that, you know, go back to one west, they fell away. But here it is, this whole time, the true, the true elders and the true apostles of Great Millstone have been rolling strong, man, like a millstone. You know, and you got these other guys that want that want the um, you know, they want the praise, you know, they want the glory. But they fell away and then now they're back. You know, they're back because because hey they see this thing too they see how uh this truth has been like a fire across the earth they see how many people's waking up they see all these young boys is uh out here you know uh, doing a thing prophesizing you know they, they see it man and they want the glory man but you guys can't have it you know you can't force yourself to have the glory and for one you know the scriptures say let another man speak well of you we speak well of the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. You know, their work show forth, you know, who they who they are. You know, they work show forth the truth of Yahweh Shai, most importantly. All right? And all they got to do is continue to keep teaching. Because, you know, I'm, I'm listening to different um, YouTubers, not GMS members. You know, you know, like, well, let me call them YouTubers. But guys that, you know, teach the word a little bit or they got their own twist to it where they use the scriptures. And uh, this one guy I've been listening to, um, uh, call him a teacher. He uh, he don't go into the word how we do, but he uses the correct scriptures. He know who Esau is. You know, he kind of go into, um, you know, something that, I, you know, none of us brothers would get into. All that number stuff. You know, and all that uh, zodiac sign, and you know, but I see why he does it because uh, he knows how the Zionists, we basically the, the, the uh, so called Jews, the so called Jews, all right, the Jewish Edomites, he know how they talk, he know how they, he know how they get by, he know what they use as far as the Talmud and things that they believe that helps them run the world, he know what they do with Satan, man. 
brings it out for the most part that I've seen, you know, in his videos. And I haven't seen every video, but I'm just seeing maybe a couple. And um, he brings it out, you know, and he tells you, like, look, Esau is scared, man. Because when they type up those numbers, when they punch in those numbers that, you know, them numbers come together to them, they do these sacrifices and rituals, but they know that it's approaching a time where they're going to lose their kingdom, man. You know? So uh, let me get back. It says, uh, verse 14, it says, I am the good shepherd and know my and know my sheep and am known of mine. All right? So Yahweh Shai know his sheep and the sheep know Yahweh Shai. Okay? That's why the Lord also said, uh, neither can anyone uh, pluck them out of his hand. All right, he came to, he came around the first time and he gathered them when he met them. All right, and he blessed them, you know, and then he left. He fulfilled his his duty, his mission, and it was up to the Israelites, the Just particular the elect, mandate. to them to continue the ministry. All right, the prophets, the teachers, the apostles, the elders, you know, and push forth this work, push forth the gospel. And now, being that the fathers fell asleep, hey, guess what? Israel went back into their own vomit, man. Back into the bullshit. But now we're in a time where the Lord, where he said, my favorite scripture is Jeremiah 3.15. He said, I will give you passes according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So these prophets been back awoke. You know, the Lord have drawn that spirit out of them while they, while they appeared back on the earth. And they're doing the will of the Most High. All right? They're doing the will of the Most High, man. And this is the last time, man, that they're going to be doing it. Because we in the end, the scriptures tell us that uh, when e when Jacob grabbed the hill of Esau, all right, Jacob is up next to rule. Because when you go into that characteristic, when you read about Jacob and Esau, it tells you that Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. And that was symbolic in letting you know that Jacob is going to take down Esau. Okay? So it says, I am the good shepherd, which Shahabashah is, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I, my, I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. So Shah didn't get killed nor murdered. He laid his life down, because there was prophecy for that to be done. All right? So when you say, you know, Shah was... When he was crucified, you got to kind of be mindful to know that it wasn't that they killed him. It was more so he laid his life down, you know, because it was his blood that had to be spilled in order to recover the remnant of Israel, man. Even the confusion of faces, you know. And that showed and that proved his love for us. And it also proved to the most high that, that we are his people, man. Because you know how the Heavenly Father, when you read, you read certain scriptures... You know, even Moses, even Moses had to calm the Most High down, you know, because Most High would just get rid of you, man. He's a power. He's the ultimate power. He don't play no games. Scriptures tell us that what? He was an austere man. So, Yahweh Shai said, uh, you see the Father, you see me. You see me, you see the Father. All right? And it said that Yahweh Shai was an austere man. So, Yahweh Shai is our image of the Most High. And we're in the image of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, you know? We're in the image of both of those two, man. You know? So, uh, let, me, let me read that again. Candy. It says, um, As the fathers know of me, even so know I the father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this folk. Them also I might bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. So this, this proves and cuts these Israelites, all right, that's out here teaching that only the southern kingdom can make it in the kingdom of heaven. The, the 12 tribes does not consist of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. You have the northern kingdom, man, okay? The so-called native Indians, they are Israelites, all right? Um, uh, the uh, Cubans, they are Israelites. The Dominicans, they are Israelites. The Puerto Ricans, they are Israelites, all right? The Brazilians, they are Israelites. Colombian, all right, to Uruguay, they are Israelites, man, all right, and they all going to come back to one fold, this is why when you read in Ezekiel, the Lord told Ezekiel to uh, uh, to take the one stick and to write upon it, 
the tribes, the, the northern and the southern, because he was going to bring them back together. Remember, the Most High scattered us, man. All right? So it's all about the gathering. That's what this thing is about. The Lord's gathering the elect. All right? Because once he gathered the, the great elect, then he could, re, he could refresh Israel, man. Once he gathered the great elect, he can refresh Israel. All right? And he take down this devil, this Edomite, man. You know? Because you other nations are going to go into slavery, man. Now, you got U.S. want to go into Iran. It's, it's big talk, man. It's things happening. You know, there was an oil ship that got uh, that got uh, missiles uh, uh, blown up. You know, got the ship blown up. And and they saying U.S. had things to do with it. So we, we're in that time. We're going to go into World War Three, man. And guess what? You had, um, let me say this, because you had, I, I think it was Iran, I believe. Per se, I know it was an Arab country. They, I believe it was Iran. They sent the letter. This was probably what a year ago, two years ago. They sent the letter to this uh, Israelite, uh, uh, what you call them, Israelite community. This this pastor that wears a suit and tie. He has a church, and he teaches that we are Israelites. You know, he's not to profit. He's not on the street. You know. I believe, I don't even think that doctrine is a hundred percent, you know, but one thing, one thing they got right is that they're Israelites and, um, I believe it was Iran or certain ministers over there in, uh, Eastern part of the world with the Arabs, with the Ishmaelites, they sent him a letter. I remember the brother, uh, 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 Bashar, Bashar, that brother, you see this video, I, you know what I'm talking about, um, he, uh, he did a video on that, man. You know? Uh, you had this this community, Israelite community, basically receiving a letter from uh, Ishmael. And they were saying how they know that we're the real Jews and they want us in the land. Well, that's beautiful. But guess what? You heathens are going to go into slavery, man. You know, all that what you're ruling over there and what you have, that's all going to be ours. You know? Hey, Yahweh Shah is coming like like coming back with vengeance, man. You know? You know, and I will understand why they will want us back because they're gonna be more happier anyway when we're ruling over them. You know? You heathens are gonna be happy. You, you're gonna be a hey, in a way, you know. You know, in a way you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn to love us to be your rulers, man, to be your judges. Because we rightfully are. This devil, this Edomite. He's Satan, man. And he has no boundary, no laws, man. He'll kill himself. Alright? He got to go, man. He got to go. He's troubling the whole world. You know? And he don't give a damn that he do. Alright? His thing is, he puffed that. You know, he said, who shall take me down? You know? He say that uh, he shall not uh, become a widow. What's that? Jeremiah 40, 45? Or is it 47? All right. You say that uh, that he's a, a lady. He would never become a widow. All right. You know, he's proud, man. Proud, man. All right. So, Yahweh Shah, when he returned, man, oh, it's all hell breaking loose, man. All right. All hell's going to be loose because he said uh, this place would be on fire already, man. And when the Lord get back, he's not, he's not uh, uh, compromising with anybody. He's taking all right, so you heathens, man, you're in trouble too. And guess what? You rightfully deserve the punishment because of what you did to the children of Israel. It's like now all of a sudden when they can see, when it when it's when it's there to see that the end is here and the truth is gonna come, the truth is resurfacing of who God's people are, you know, despite their gods and their religion, and they know the truth of who God's people are and we worshiping the most high in the right way, because they're God's people, the only ones that really could worship the most high. Now everybody wanna wanna Just wanna try to make their amends, man. So well, now you wanna get right. You know, now you wanna apologize. Well, ain't no apology, man. You know, you did what you did. You know, you Arabs, you, you played a big part in our slavery as well. You know? You know, you played a big part, man. You know? Let me go, let me get another another verse and I wrap this thing up. It says, um, therefore doeth my father love me because I lay down my life. That I might take it again. Alright, so because he's gonna take his life again, man. He's gonna come back. Okay? 
Mm -hmm. Yahweh Shai left, and now he returned. You know? It says, um, no man taketh it from me. All right? See? There you go. No man took Yahweh Shai's life. He laid down his life. Let's get that right. It says, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. And that's the power that Yahweh Shah received, man. Because why? Everything is in obedience unto Yahweh Shah, man. Everything was made to uh to obey Yahweh Shah. This world is his, man. You know? And I'm just thankful that the most high created me to be an Israelite, man. And, and really hopefully to be the elect. You know, it's one thing about being an Israelite, but it's another thing about being the elect, man. You know? So I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, man. You know, and all the glory and honor because he deserved it. Right now, we're in his absence. The world is not uh, uh, speaking about the Lord except for the elect. You know, the world is all about, you know, idolatry, paganism, you know, witchcraft, you know, lovers of themselves, do as thou will. You know, Jake is, is finished, man. And because Yahweh Shah laid his life down, you know, the elect ain't finished, you know, and I'm going to say this too, Israel ain't finished, but it looks like Israel is finished, man, you know, I could drive around all day long while I live and just look at niggas, man, you know, look at these hoes and bitches, you know, because our people are just through, you can't sit them down, you can't talk sense into them, you can't beat them, you know, you can't beat them, you know, that's why the Lord said, train up a child in the way he should go, with the way he should grow, because... When you a child, you know, your parents will beat you because they, they love you, you know, it's because they want you to do the right thing, they want you to get it, you know, and that's a good thing because now that child knows from being, uh, from, from being uh, 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 beaten, he knows right from wrong, you know, he knows that he shouldn't do that because that carries a heavy consequence, but do good, you know, so, hey man. I hope this lesson was edifying. It's more like an open form in the spirit, you know, because uh, we need Yahweh Shai, man. And I cry every day for the Lord, man. I do a video every day if I can, Lord willing, you know, more than one. All right, just the whole, just, just, just to be in the spirit, man, because it's better to be with the Lord than to be here, you know. And Paul was getting into that. He said he was perplexed between the two. You know, you'd rather be with the Most High than be here, but it's beneficial to be here because, you know, we, we could uh, teach this truth, you know, and wake up, and, you know, wake up the elect, the spirit and power, get how about Chanel shot, you know. Remember uh, Revelation 7 chapter, the Lord spoke about how he's holding back the wings of the angels, meaning he's holding back the destruction until he sealed the servants, the elect, you know, in their foreheads. With that mark of salvation, don't give a fuck about you know? them. It's and once they gather, dream. you know, the angels gonna let the winds blow. They're gonna let the destruction come. Because there's really nothing else to be holding on to. You know, I'm thinking about Lot and his wife. How his wife looked back. Well, what you looking back for? You know? It's the same thing that's gonna happen. Hey man, that Lot and his wife is a uh is an example of today. Because you hey brothers, you're gonna have women, your woman, you know. They're going to be looking back. They're going to get caught up. They're going to be looking back at society. And they're going to be crying for their loved ones, their family members. They might not even want to uh, pilgrim with you, man. When it's time to move, you might have to leave her ass, man. Leave her ass behind. And you gonna, you know what's going to happen to her. She's done. She's finished. She's finished, man. You know? Because she looked back, man. You know? So all these, all these accounts in the scriptures... You know, it, 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 it comes back around, man. You know, everything repeats itself. The scripture, the Lord said there's nothing new under the sun. The only thing new is, is the destruction that's coming. And this is what's going to be, you know, the ultimate destruction and the ultimate great work that the Lord have ever done, all right, on the earth as far as delivering his people, man. You know, I'll say that because the, it's great work done every day. You know, it was great work that the Lord created the, the moon. He created the, the light. You know, he created the clouds. That's all great work. Taking nothing from it. 
but compares comparison the deliverance from Egypt and comparing the deliverance now, whoo-wee, it's over, man. It's over. So with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. I'd like to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his words to serve the truth. Shalom. Real. And do you know what he said? And he meant this in terms of you're going to have to totally change the way you do business and revolutionize your, your thinking about moving products. But his statement was this technology will destroy our way of life. The purpose of this technology is to destroy our way of life. Now, it's interesting because in his saying that, the whole room went silent. By the way, these are people who love the idea of tracking things as they move around. But even then, the room went silent because that was a pretty heavy statement. And I don't think he meant that it's going to absolutely destroy our way of life as we live day to day. But I also don't think he realized the symbolic importance of what he had said. Because if we do actually number every human being, and if we do number every physical item, and if we can keep track of all of that through databases and through computer systems, it will actually destroy our way of life. There will be no more freedom. There will be no more privacy or no more ability to walk around uh, and, and even talk to other people freely because your every move will be monitored and tracked. And these devices, as I said, this industry consortium, they've already begun appearing, these radio frequency devices in consumer products. What you're seeing here is a package of Gillette razor blades that's been equipped with one of these unique numbers, making it trackable from a distance. The purpose here was shoplifting prevention, but ultimately they want to put one of these on every physical item that we buy, meaning that not only would you be identifying yourself with your chip as you made your purchase, but all of the things you bought would also be identified with you, linked in a database. And in, in essence, it would, be, it would make it difficult in a world where, let's say, there is the mark of the beast. got a brother-in-law who is maybe willing to take the mark of the beast and give you the stuff that he buys so you can survive. In a world like that, if he bought a shirt, paid for it with his mark, and then handed it to you, that shirt could be tracked at a distance. It could be identified as you walk through a doorway, and they could say, hey, wait a minute, you're not Joe Schmo. You don't have the chip in here. You're not this. In fact, now we've identified you as being the guy who's in trouble for not taking the chip, and now we're going to scan everything you're wearing, and we'll know where you got it, and we'll know who your accomplices were who helped you obtain these items. Now, one of the things that's going to have to happen globally, in addition to identifying everyone, linking everyone with the satellites and the database and the number of payment systems, getting everybody using credit cards away from cash and getting everyone to identify themselves, is have it be universal and standardized. And there is a massive push right now in industry and in retail to do that. It's called oneness. And in fact, at the, uh, this is from the Retail Systems 2003 in Chicago, creating oneness among systems, supply chain, and business. And the idea is that everything will be standardized. The whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an, R R an RFID chip implanted in them. All money is to be um, in those chips, right? There'll be no more cash. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. And all money will be in your chips. And so, any, so not, instead of having cash, Anytime you have money in your, in, your, in your chip, they can take out whatever they want to take out whenever they want to. If they say you owe us this much money in taxes, they just deduct it out of your chip digitally. Total control. Total control. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip. And you have nothing. You can't buy food. You can't do anything. It's total control of the people. And that chip's connected to a database that has your purchasing records, what you do, what everything, you sell. everything is in there, you know. And so they they want a one world government, controlled by them, everybody being chipped, all your money in those chips, and they control the chips and they control the people. And you become a slave. You become a serf to these people. That's their goal. That's their intentions. Machine interfaces, a technology that marks the beginnings of a new kind of man, the cyborg, the robot man. Neuro robotic technology can be applied in different directions the brain controlling the machine, or inversely, the machine controlling the brain. So we're just going to go through each one of these arms one, two, three, four, 
five, six. And let's do all of those and help us do it. But a third option is also possible. One brain controlling another brain via the interface. How does this work in the case of the robot rat? All you need, in fact, are three well-positioned electrodes. Two electrodes in the sensory cortex of the rat send stimuli to the zones connected to its whiskers. When the rat follows the signal sent to its left side and turns in that direction, it is rewarded with a discharge into its pleasure zone. It is rewarded with a discharge into its pleasure zone. This discharge produces a flow of dopamine, providing instant pleasure. This zone is also called the brain's reward center. We possess a reward center too. We possess a reward center too, just like the rat. In the process of creating a cyborg, this is square one. If we send a stimulus to the zone related to the hand, we create a sensation in that area. In the same way, via the motor cortex, we can provoke an involuntary movement. We can provoke an involuntary movement. In Boston, the first machine brain interface trials have already been conducted on paraplegic patients. Thanks to an electrode chip called the brain gate, they can operate a computer remotely by thought. So it's no coincidence that these researches are partly funded by DARPA, the US's defense research agency. Neuroscience will bring us the soldier of the future. This is a new deal, gentlemen. Pushing on that recon forward. Enemy center of gravity is downtown. Just get a good view from here. A remote controlled soldier? A soldier who, in the midst of the battle, can be sent crucial data and information downloaded into his brain? A soldier who can control his fears? That's mean. That was mean, Matari. Dude, look at we people all in there. <laughs> dude, those two people. You see who pulled up in the white car? I shot that dude in the white car, ran in. Oh yes, you're gonna get it. Yes, naughty little boys. <laughs> yes. 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 We possess a reward center too, just like the rat. If we send a stimulus to the zone related to the hand, we create a sensation in that area. In the same way, via the motor cortex, we can provoke an involuntary movement. <laughs> you little <laughs> shoot it at us! You little <laughs> die! <laughs> We 
we're going to reach a level of control. The more we learn about the brain, the more researchers discover how little our consciousness and will control our choices and behaviors.